In these uncertain times in India, I collected a set of questions regarding COVID-19 that my friends and family including me had. I then reached out to these panel of doctors, Dr. Samiran Panda, director and scientist at ICMR and Nari, Executive Director Medical Coal India Limited, CMO and Deputy CMO Coal India Limited headquarters. They answered questions and gave some great advice related to these topics and in this video we are going to cover this topic. So now a very important section uh, which is kind of very controversial these days that's medicines. Uh, so some days ago Dr. Um, Priya Sampath Kumar from Mayo Clinic USA did an interview with Faye D'Souza uh, and she said that Remdesivir plasma therapy does not save lives. Then again, a few days ago, Hindustan Times shared an article uh, with um, by Dr. Lancelot Pinto um, uh, that ivermectin, antivirals, antibiotics, these uh, do not, plasma therapy again, these do not cure COVID. There have been no study that has shown uh, that these actively help in treating COVID. There might be symptoms that your um doctors are doctors might suggest when to take it but then again a lot of like people that i talked to they told me that their doctors are recommending them remdesivir favipiravir or stuff like that and they are being sold at much higher prices the, originally they are probably 800 inr but now they are being sold at 5000 inr so what to do what is the truth um why is there so much hoarding if they do not, uh, actually even icmr uh, stated out this guideline on april 20th right that remdesivir is not a life saving drug so if things are so clear then why are doctors still recommending it and um, what should one do whom to believe okay this again a uh, very critical and fantastic question actually shita so there are two kinds of medicines which uh, doctors practice one is evidence-based medicine, and another is eminence-based medicine. So, uh, where from does the eminence come? Uh, hmm. It's, well, I have been practicing for so long, some position, some eminence, you know. Right. But let us talk about evidence first. Right. So, it is very, very important to know what works, and it is also important to know what does not work, right? Because right. uh, otherwise there will be unnecessary expenditure, you know, the black market right. and that, that happens and all of, right. all of them. Let me right. tell you two things. Right. There is a trial called Solidarity Trial, which was a global trial and India was a party to it. And okay. that clearly showed that anti-HIV medicines like Lopinavi, Ritumavi, they do not work. So initially okay. there was a hope that they might work because they are antiviral medicines. But it has been found out through the solidarity trial where India was one of the partners. It really also showed that even hydroxychloroquine as a therapeutic agent does not work. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, the other trial, which was absolutely Indian, indigenous trial called PLACID trial. And mm -hmm. that PLACID trial was done so well that British Medical Journal published it. And uh, it clearly shows convalescent plasma does not work in terms okay. of preventing progression of a moderate state of disease to severe or severe to fatality or going on to ventilator. Third, a recovery trial from UK that has very clearly shown that steroid does work. But early in, you know, institution or administration of steroid might do harm than good. Mm -hmm. So okay. physician's role is very important there. So your treating right. physician will say, because for example, I, I was repeatedly talking about monitoring your oxygen and temperature. So mm -hmm. if your temperature is not going away, of course, mm -hmm. by taking paracetamol 50 twice a day, if you are an adult or even four times mm -hmm. a day, I would repeat, mm -hmm. because many people mm -hmm. have this misconception. And right. uh, oxygen saturation, if they are being maintained and you are doing this cloning, deep breathing right. and cloning, so right. with all of these, after seven days, if your if your hacking cuff is not going away and if your fever is not going away, then it is a good time to start with the butasamide you know, puff. Butasamide puff helps. That's a steroid okay. puff. That really okay. helps. Okay. So or even if a physician uh, 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 
thinks that it's okay to start with the low dose steroid tablet, that's fine. But it okay. should not be started too early, number one. Okay. About remdesivir, remdesivir mm -hmm. does not prevent death. Neither it prevents, you know, going to the chance, I'm talking the risk of going to ventilator. What mm -hmm. remdesivir does in the advanced stage and that too when you are in the hospital, in the early stage if it is given, it reduces the duration of stay in the hospital. That's the end point, which right. influences. So it's very, very important for us to understand that evidence-based practice, and we should mm -hmm. keep our faith on that. Now, mm -hmm. the doctors or whoever suggests, you know, uh, for example, you talked about ivermectin, and mm -hmm. you talked about, you know, um, other things, uh, mm -hmm. even, even, yeah, physiotherapy, let's say. Mm -hmm. uh, so all these do not work. So it's, it's an attempt in despair. It is an attempt right. in despair. Oh, let me try anything and everything. Not right. needed, not needed at all. So what I'm saying that if we do our homeless isolation and care very well, mm -hmm. it is, it is, there is a great possibility that most of them would not require going to the hospital. If they okay. go to the hospital, we would carefully give steroid, or we, if required, we might give them the signal. But that's it? in the early phase of the treatment. Right. There, is, there are two other drugs which have been pushed. And uh, I, let me tell you, it's not the physicians. It's the, the big business houses, you know, who are pushing this. Not only okay. for endocrine, but italizumab and tocilizumab. And they are immunomodulators. And now what we are getting to see from different places, you know, the mucormycosis, the deep mm -hmm. systemic fungal infection, which affects your eyes, even goes to the brain. You have mm -hmm. to eviscerate the eyes. Mm -hmm. And it's sometimes so very difficult to treat mucormycosis. Mm -hmm. This is mucormycosis is a deep fungal infection that mm -hmm. happens when somebody gets really immunosuppressed. Mm -hmm. And that happens if too much of steroid is being given, and or, uh, you know, tocilizumab or tocilizumab is given for a longer period of time because they are immunomodulators. Mm -hmm. And now we won't believe in Shinta. The way mucormycosis is happening in Gujarat and in other states also. So that's that's appalling. So what I would say that let's all have faith on evidence-based medicine, number one. Number mm -hmm. two, let's all try to follow the home-based isolation and care. And also the uh, this whole uh, you know ivermectin, it, it doesn't work, really. Uh, mm -hmm. about prevention, and I will tell you if you are interested, uh, BMJ, the British Medical Journal that is, is open access. And call a living document because they keep on changing, you know, mm -hmm. based on mm -hmm. the collected evidence. It's right. called systematic review and meta analysis. It is okay. easily downloadable. It is in the public domain. So okay. anybody who is interested can download can read it. BMJ. Okay. okay. Yes. Okay. For interviews and other section, check the link description below or other videos in this channel.